This is the brand new Panasonic S5, a $2,000 full frame mirrorless camera with 24 megapixels, sensor stabilization, and 4K video. And this is the Sony a7 III, and it pretty much has all of the same specs. So we're gonna put them up against each other and see which one is better. Will this unseat the king? Both cameras performed great as walking around cameras, snapping right into focus and capturing bright, true colors. Technically, the Panasonic and the Sony have the same specs for the electronic viewfinder, but when I use them side by side, one after the other, the Panasonic looks better. I'm not exactly sure what the difference is, but it's there. I see it. Another difference is that the a7 III, the Sony, has a tilting screen, while the Panasonic has a full flip screen, which is nice if you're shooting over your head or down low. And another thing that I notice is that even on a moderately bright day today, it's overcast, you can see the screen on the Panasonic clearly. On the Sony, you can't. You have to look through the EVF to review your photos because it's too dark on the back of the camera. I've been shooting with both cameras side by side, and I'd say they're a pretty similar shooting experience. They even feel similar. In fact, I'd say the Lumix almost feels like it's trying to be a Sony with this body design look. One thing I did notice is that the Panasonic is more responsive. And what I mean by that is when I change a setting or press the shutter, everything ha seems to happen very quickly. Uh, the Sony feels like it's just a little bit laggy, nothing detrimental, nothing that's gonna ruin your shooting experience, but you definitely feel it, it's not as snappy. Another thing to consider is that the Panasonic's battery life seems to be shorter. That's something Sony really worked on. Their first cameras, the battery life wasn't so great, and then they managed to work on that and get it to be better. For the Panasonic battery, you can use a GH5 battery. You can also charge it with a USB-C charger, but it needs to be a high-powered charger. Uh, we tried to plug it in in our car to charge it, and it wouldn't work. When Panasonic first launched the L mount, I really criticized them for not having any interesting lenses, but now they have most of the holy trinity. This 24 to 70 f2.8, a 70 to 200 f2.8. In fact, they have the lenses most people need, so it's starting to look a lot more attractive. They still don't have any big telephotos though. There's nothing beyond 200 millimeters, so if you need that for sports or wildlife, Panasonic's just not the system for you yet. Some of you are asking, how does it compare to the Panasonic S1? Well, technically the S1 is 2,500 bucks, so it's a higher end camera. It's got a top screen, it's a bigger, bulkier body, but in most ways they're kind of identical, especially since the S1 frequently sells for around $2,000. Still, this one's newer and just feels a little snappier to me, so I'd probably recommend it over it. What about the Nikon Z5? Why aren't we comparing it to that? Nikon refused to loan us a camera for this comparison, so we I bought one out of our own pocket and it has not yet arrived. Be sure to subscribe to see that side-by-side -side comparison coming soon. Panasonic is really known for their video and this is way better than the Sony a7 III. First, it has a flip screen, which provides a lot of versatility, but also it supports 4K60, like with a crop, but still for adding those little bits of B-roll and slow motion, that's still useful. I wish it did 4K 60 full width, but it does 4K 30 full width. And yes, unlike the Canon R6 we're filming this on, it will actually record video to two card slots. The continuous autofocus was so good that I actually wanna try it as a vlogging camera. So we'll do that here. So how does it do as a vlogging camera? I guess we'll find out. The previous Panasonics would tend to find your face but then jump onto the background. So I am at... Yeah, if you buy the S5, you're gonna need to buy an extra battery too. <laughs> now let's do the unboxing test where we hold stuff up and see how quickly it snaps into focus. This is at 24 f2.8. By the way, people always make fun of people who do unboxing and stuff, but like they found a way to make a living doing what they love and we just wanna make sure that they have tools that will consistently deliver. Now let's try the super intense maximum bokeh test. I wanna talk a little bit about the kit lens that comes with this. It's the 20 to 60 f3.5 to 5.6. I actually really like that they made it a little bit wider angle than the traditional 24 to 105 because I think it's a more modern style. People like to get up close because we've all kind of learned photography from our smartphones now. 
So I'm going to kind of move in and out. And what I want to see from this is that it's keeping me acceptably in focus even as I move around and maybe even as I hold objects up to the camera. You know, this is really useful for people doing documentaries, people doing interviews, because often you have that close-up B camera that is unmanned. And you want that kind of shallow depth of field look to blur out some sort of distracting background. And being able to just set it up and let it record is great. There's no recording limit on this like there is on the Sony a7 III. So if you need to let it roll for an hour, it seems like you should be able to. Okay, clearly AF is not an option for tracking movement, though it does okay on still subjects. Just for reference, here's footage from the $900 Canon RP, which nailed this test perfectly. For video AF, Panasonic still has a ways to go, and I think it's time that they abandoned their depth from defocus technology and invested in phase detect AF like literally all of their competitors. Now let's take some portraits. <laughs> segment of our testing. We're going to be using a 70 to 200 on each camera and testing the autofocusing capability as well as the eye autofocusing capability. And we're doing it with this longer glass and in the scenarios so that we can really test the limits of the autofocus. I'll also be opening up my aperture all the way to f2.8 just to make that depth of field even more shallow and make that autofocus work a little harder. It's not uncommon either. It's not impractical. It's not crazy. There is a certain like lagginess when you shoot. Oh, really? Yeah, like I press the button and lift my finger. All right, take a deep breath. Hold it. No, let go. No smile. <laughs> good. Okay. Yeah, those look pretty good. Look. Oh, yeah. I do like the pinch to zoom. It's not as responsive as my Canon, but. <laughs> yeah, it's taking a little lag there. Mm -hmm. This is your awkward smile. <laughs> that, then the deep breath work. Do you see that? Yeah, I like the deep breath jerk. Do it with the Sony too. I've never used the Panasonic before and I get all, everything right the first time and I've been shooting with the Sony for a year and I mess stuff up. Oh wait, is the eye autofocus on? Is it? Uh, let me check the settings. Um, go back out to the shutter. You can't touch it. Yeah. Make the second one AFC and then make that third one up. Hit FN again and go to the third one. Wow, this is so easy. I thought it was another focus mode. We'll have to go into the menus. Oh my god. Are you kidding me? Face register no face registration. No, that's absolutely useless. I think it's under camera one somewhere, but Oh my god, people are so full of shit. Face slash eye. It's all on. Oh now it caught your eye. Okay. Now it's got it. The end results were virtually indistinguishable. They both looked great and nailed IIF most of the time. I couldn't have said that about previous Panasonic, so way to go Panasonic. We can't edit the S5 RAW yet, but the Panasonic JPEG color is a little warmer. Now we trade places. Both the a7 III and the S5 nailed eye autofocus the vast majority of the time in these challenging conditions, using both AFS and AFC. Panasonic's depth from defocus is hugely improved and has finally reached the point where we can recommend it for portrait and wedding photographers. That's a big deal. Panasonic is now a serious player in the pro portrait segment. Note that the same camera settings produced images of very different brightnesses because the Panasonic's ISO 100 is about half a stop darker than Sony's because ISO is fake. Regardless, even with JPEG, the differences can be fixed with a couple of clicks in post. Someone's gonna focus on the bokeh, gonna make a joke that's already been said. Cause you're corny. In the comments down below, let me know what you think. Is it better than the Sony? Are you going to buy it? Are you put off by the lack of lenses or do they have all the lenses that you need? Are you gonna buy our book? Are you gonna learn more about composition and skills and lighting and posing? Are you gonna do that? Are you gonna use our coupon code SUMMER25 and get 25% off? Are you? Put it in the comments. <laughs> Thanks and bye. <laughs> Don't forget to subscribe. Technically, the Sony and the Pentax. Technically, the Pentax and the, the Pentax looks better. It's a Panasonic. Why do I keep saying that?
Does the evil start with P? Oh, because it's a Lumix. I, I, Lumix, Pentax. I don't know what's wrong with my brain. Technically, the Panasonic and the Sony have the same...